Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new and you're stopping by for the first time, welcome. My name is Melissa and I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor, and much more. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. So for today, I have five new fall farmhouse DIYs that I used mostly Dollar Tree products so I hope you guys will stick around it's definitely a little bit longer of a video but there are many steps so I cut it down as best as I could so anyway um, with all that being said let's jump right into today's video I hope you guys enjoy it and please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends or family if you think they would enjoy it starting off we are going to take these two picture frames from Dollar Tree and they have like this galvanized metal and I take a dowel rod that are always linked in my uh, de description box under my Amazon favorites these are 3 eighths inch square dowels and I just uh, kind of measure I was originally going to try to do the angles, but you guys, I'm no good at angles. So um, one of my subscribers had mentioned a miter box that does angles. So I'm going to try to look into getting that. So I did just go ahead and measure the frame out and then cut my pieces and then take my finger sander. And I just went ahead and I uh, sanded the edges because they were a little bit rough. So once I have all my pieces cut, uh, I go ahead and I take a paintbrush and I dip it into my wood glue and then I just uh, paint on the edges. My lid to my wood glue is like glued shut and I couldn't get it open. But I do like using a brush anyway just because I have a little bit more control and it doesn't make such a mess. And I just go ahead and I glue this frame together. Now I just start with the first frame. I get that all glued together and then I glue the second frame to it. So once I have both frames glued together, I take a very tiny screwdriver and I just take these little clips off. They are really cute, so I definitely save them. I mentioned in my last video that I save everything, so I'm sure that I could find something to do with these. So I definitely don't want to waste them and I put them aside. I then take one of these frames and again my wood glue and I just glue down one side and the top I glue that to the frame that I had already put together and then I do the same thing with the second one so that essentially they're all glued together and um, basically we're making like a door so I had this little mini wreath and I I feel like I got it from Dollar Tree, but I'm not really sure if that's where I got it because I can't really remember seeing them there. But anyway, I had this in my craft stash and I thought that it would be perfect for this project. So I do just take this little mini wreath and some of these, um, I don't even know what you want to call them, pit berries. Um, I got these, I definitely got these from Dollar Tree. I had um, gold and like a pearl color. So I just wrap them all the way around the wreath just to give it a little bit of decoration. I then take some eucalyptus from Dollar Tree and I just glue that all the way around the wreath. I start by pulling a few of the greenery pieces off of the pick and then I stick the end into this wreath and then I glue down the edges so that it sits flat on the wreath and I just continue that and repeat that all the way around the wreath until I get it to how I like it. So after I have the wreath with the greenery on it, I take these little mini pumpkins and I go over them with some Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew. Originally I was just going to um, lightly 
paint some of the cashew on here but I didn't like the way it looked and I'm really going for the neutrals this year I, I'm not really big on bright colors I mentioned this on in my last video and a lot of you agreed but I do know a lot of you do like the orange so if you like the orange just leave them as is and then continue on with the project without painting these so I do go ahead and give them two good coats I didn't show that because I don't think you guys need to see me painting these pumpkins over and over and over but once I have my pumpkins painted I then had this circle wood piece and I give this a good coat of the cashew as well so while the cashew is still wet on the circle piece I take some moss waverly chalk paint just a very little bit on the edge of my brush and I just brush and blend that in just to give it a bit of dimension I then take a very small paintbrush and some truffle waverly chalk paint and I paint the stems of these pumpkins just so that way it wouldn't look funny so once I had the stems painted I then go in in the grooves of these pumpkins and with not very much on my brush I kind of dip my brush in the paint I dab off the excess and then I just go in the grooves of these little pumpkins to again to give it some dimension I then take these rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and I cut out the word give thanks now I don't know why I didn't figure out that it wouldn't fit too good so I did just kind of smush these letters together and then put a little bit of greenery from these rub on transfers at the bottom of that I take the mini pumpkins off of the sticks I cut them in half and then I glue them all the way around this reef where wreath wherever I see fit you can put as many or as little of these pumpkins as you like but I did just put four halves so all you would need is two pumpkins so after um, I had them cut I glued them on I don't know if I mentioned that it's another late one you guys but I put the rest to the side so I knew that I had to put this in the middle of my wreath but it didn't quite fit so I did just take those leftover sticks from the pumpkins and I figured out that I could glue the sticks onto the back of this circle piece and then glue that onto the wreath so I kind of just measure how much of length I would need for it to hold to the back and then I glue that down um, two pieces or one piece on each side I should say once I have my um, wooden pieces these really are skewers that's what they're called is skewers so once I have the skewers glued down to the circle I then just flip my wreath over lay this down and then just um, put some hot glue on top and it held really really nicely I then just go ahead and make a simple bow this ribbon was from Dollar Tree it is in their fall collection I really love it I definitely want to get some more so um, I always link my bow tutorial in the cards so I will link that for you guys and then I just glued that to the top so after I finish the wreath completely then I take some this is new stain I usually usually use Jayco bean but I cannot find my Jayco bean anywhere so I did pick this up from Walmart it is in the color Kona and it is polyurethane and stain in one so I thought that that would be really good because when you polyurethane something then you can wipe it down really easily whereas with stain you have to polyurethane on top of it but this is just one step and I went ahead and I polyurethane that whole frame I then just take this I don't even know what this is it's for the end of a dowel rod and I cannot think of the name but I just took one of those and I painted it in the cashew so while all that's drying we're going to work on this next project I take one of these Dollar Tree signs and I pull the a hanger off as well as the stickers and then I sand that down really nicely so that 
um, it's flat and the glue isn't all over the place from the sticker because if you try to paint it and the glue is on there then you'll definitely be able to see it and then I use my handy dandy vacuum and I vacuum up all the dust I then just take another square dowel again these are always linked in my Amazon favorites because they literally are probably my favorite item that I get from Amazon I measure out a frame and then I cut them with my mini miter saw and this is also linked in my Amazon favorites it is a different color but it, it is the exact same thing just a different color once I have all my pieces cut, again, I take the same stain, it's called Kona, I got it from Walmart, and I just stain all the frame pieces. I do believe that this little can was about $7, but it's a good deal because you get paint and stain all in one step. I then take our little doorknob and I put some hot glue on the back. And then I glue it to the right hand side. Now this is personal preference. I just like the way it looked on the right, but if you wanna put it on the left, that's totally up to you. Once I have our doorknob down, I then take my chip brush and that same cashew color, and I just dry brush all the way around our door just to make it look a little bit more old and weathered. As I always say, if you guys have been here for any amount of time, then you know that I love to dry brush the edges of any and everything that I possibly can. So once I have everything dry brushed, I do just take a small screw and my drill. You could do this with a screwdriver, but my drill always works better. And I screw that screw to the top and then hang my wreath. And that is it for this one, you guys. I am so excited to put this one up come time to decorate for fall. So let me know in the comments down below. As usual, once the video is done, which project is your favorite? But that one's definitely catching my eye. So for the sign that we took the sticker off of, I do just take some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I fill in those holes. Once I have the holes filled, and um, I'm just going to let that dry because it does need a few minutes to dry before you can paint over it. So I take these pumpkin ornaments, I, I believe they're ornaments, and I just take a piece of buffalo check scrapbook paper, trace it, cut it out, and then take my uh, purple disappearing glue stick. It's a disappearing purple glue stick and I just glue all the way on that pumpkin and then lay my scrapbook paper down and just make sure that it is nice and smooth. I then take the other two pumpkins and my moss waverly chalk paint and I give these a really good coat of the moss. And again while this paint is drying or while this paint is wet, I do take some white Waverly chalk paint and I just um, put a little bit just to, again, give it a bit dimension. I just think it always looks a bit plain when you have one solid color. But again, it's preference. You can leave it any color you want or add some. That's the beauty of DIY. You can change this up to suit your decor and to make you happy the way that you like it, if that makes any sense at all. Sorry, you guys. You guys know that it's late here. Everybody's asleep, and that is when I have quiet time. <laughs> anyway, so once I have that done, I set those aside to dry, and I just take some white Waverly chalk paint and my favorite paintbrush. As usual, it's linked in my Amazon favorites, and I give this a coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I do not do this perfectly because I like it when that brown shows through. It just looks a lot more rustic and weathered that way. 
I then just take my chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush all three of these pumpkins. As you can see my poor chip brushes have about had it. You guys they have not been in stock and now they're in stock and one of my subscribers brought it to my attention. These are $26 for a pack that's usually $5 so I'm definitely taking care of the ones that I have but they do look a little bit rough. Anyway I made a double jute bow for the buffalo check pumpkin and then I made two buffalo check bows for the green pumpkins and I just take a dab of hot glue and I glue those bows on each pumpkin. So after I glue these uh, bows down I lay them on my sign to make sure that they are where I like them and then take some hot glue and I glue them into place. Once I have them glued into place, I did go on my computer and I printed off this little welcome sign. Um, what I do guys is I search on Google what I like and I'll either copy the image or take a screen screenshot and then print it off that way. So I just uh, trace that on with my graphite paper again linked in my Amazon favorites and then I go over it with my black paint pen. Now this had a little pumpkin for the O and I wanted it to match so I did just go over the pumpkin with a very small uh, paintbrush in the moss color and then for the stem and the vines or whatever they're called I go in again with my black paint pen and then last but not least to finish this off I just start by gluing the side piece down and then I do um, the longer pieces and then I do the other side just so that way I can make sure that my frame fits together really nicely without any gaps. And I do just use some hot glue for this. You can use whatever glue you like, but that finishes up this sign, you guys. So for the next sign, I took this Harvest Blessings uh, sign from Dollar Tree, took the tag off again, and again, I give this not a perfect coat, just a um, coat enough to cover it and again just leaving some of that wood color shine through. So while that dry, while that dries I'm going to take one of these houses and my utility knife I score the inside and then I go around the back side where this piece meets the frame and I just cut that off so that it's easier to work with and then you need to cut off the excess from the frame. Now for this one, um, again, I took the sticker off because we're gonna use the back so that you have a smooth surface, and I do give that one a good coat without anything shining through. So while my paintbrush is wet, I had this left over from a different project and it is just one of the five by five decor pieces from Dollar Tree. And again, I just give that a light coat, not being perfect, set that aside. Moving back to this other sign, I take um, these pumpkins that are on picks again, and this is the largest one and I give this a nice coat of the moss chalk paint while my brush while my brush is still wet. Um, if you guys were here for my truck sign, I cut this off of the truck. So we are going to be using that today. And I give that a light coating of that moss color. And then I go back to the smaller pumpkin. So there's three different sizes. That was a medium and the green was a large and I give the medium one a good coat of cashew and then take my truffle and paint the stems as well as give these both uh, some dry brushing with the truffle color again just to give these a bit more dimension. I think it makes them pop off of your signs or whatever project you're doing a little bit more so I definitely like using that technique. I just pull them right off the sticks and then take my utility knife and again cut these right in half. So 
once I have them cut in half, then some of them did not have stems because I did use some of the smaller ones, like I said, to set them aside. And um, the ones that did not have stems, I just took the leftover uh, skewer and I glued the stems on and then painted those with the truffle color as well. So I start by using a medium in the middle and then I just lay it out how I want it and then glue those down onto my sign with some hot glue. Definitely lay it out before you glue it down so you know that you like the way it looks. And then again, I printed this off of my computer and I take my graphite paper and I trace it on and go over the lettering with my black paint pen. Next, I thought that this was missing something. It looked just a bit plain and I wanted to dress it up. So I do take my pencil and I just go around the edges and I do this in pencil first, just so that way if I mess up a little bit, then I can erase it. And then I go in with my larger black paint pen and I just go over the edges once more with my black paint pen and then I made small bows out of the strings that actually came with the pumpkin ornaments. I thought they were so cute and the perfect little jute bows and I glued them all to the top of the pumpkins. I then made another simple bow out of the same ribbon I used in the project before, cut dovetails in it, glued that to the middle and then took some of that eucalyptus from Dollar Tree and I glued the greenery, greenery right into the middle. Sorry I can't talk you guys I just sometimes it just does not want to come out right. So it's up to you if you want to use the greenery. Um, I really actually like it. I wasn't going to put it on there but even after I put the bow, the bows and everything, I thought that it was missing something, but that is it for that project, you guys. I know you guys love my signs, and I honestly do love making signs, but with fall, it's fun because I can use all, like, the pumpkins and stuff to make it three-dimensional. So moving on to the house project, um, I wanted to make this look like shiplap. So I just take my ruler and I start at the top. I create lines as thick as the ruler just so that way they can be nice and even. And then I go back over those with my black paint pen. And I do use my fine point paint pen. Over this year, I have gotten all kinds of stuff. So I have all different size paint pens and I do have been getting them from the Walmart craft section. I then printed off this give thanks and once again, I take my graphite paper and my black paint pen and I go over those, um, over the lettering. Once I go over the lettering, then I'm going to take my drill and a drill bit and I uh, drill some holes into the sides. Now I did this on the second line, kind of right where that corner is, and I did the exact same thing on the other side. And then I took some unfinished wooden beads and I put them on a skewer um, kind of spaced out so that I could paint them easily and I painted every third bead with the moss color Waverly chalk paint and then every second bead with the white Waverly chalk paint and then left the other ones with that natural wood color. I really enjoy that wood color but I didn't want to just use all wood so I did just paint them a few different colors just to match the rest of the decor that I am making today. So once I had those done then I stuck a piece of jute through the first hole. I knotted it and then cut it off. I then take a piece of painter's tape and you always want to paint your ends of your jute if you're trying to string beads just because the jute likes to fray and it's really hard to actually get it into the bead. So definitely use something like tape to um, put on the end and then you kind of want to 
twist the end after you've put the tape on there and then you can easily string your beads through now again I did um, green white and then the natural wood and continued that pattern all the way until I was out of beads and then took my jute stuck it through the other side tied a knot and again I cut the rest of the jute off so once I had the jute cut I then take my uh, chip brush and some ink waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around this sign. I do dry brush on top as well as the edges. Um, most of the time I'll just do the edges but for this project I thought that it would look nice to dry brush to kind of make it look like wood. Um, I always like this look so let me know in the comments down below if you would leave the middle blank or if you would dry brush it and I also did do the edges as well as the beads just a little bit I didn't do a whole bunch or go crazy on the beads but I did want the beads to look cohesive I then just take the rest that was on my brush and go around the edge of this frame I forgot to mention that I glued the frame down duh <laughs> And then that is it for that project, you guys. That took just a few minutes, and I am in love with the way that it turned out. So last but not least, I take my graphite paper, another printable. It says, Hello Pumpkin. This one was a bit tricky because of the sides, but I made it work, and I trace that on, and again, I go over it with my black paint pen and then this one had another pumpkin so I just did the same thing I went over that pumpkin with a very small paintbrush and my moss colored Waverly chalk paint and I, for this one for the stem and the little curly cues one of you guys told me what they're called and I know what it's called I, I'm just having a brain fart um, but I go over those with some truffle colored Waverly chalk paint um, just to I wanted it to look a little bit different than the other one so I did go ahead and use the brown and then once I had those that done then I take this wooden piece that I cut off from that truck and I glue that down I then just made another simple bow and I made a jute bow as well. I glued the jute bow onto the buffalo check bow and then I glue that to the corner of this sign. And I cannot figure out which one is my favorite, you guys. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below. I really love all of them. They just look so cohesive. Like they kind of look like you would buy them in a pack or something. I don't know, but anyway you guys i'm tired i'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already thank you to all my new subscribers thank you for joining i am so excited to see what is in store next for this channel but don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already and um i will catch you guys in my next one don't forget that my P.O. Box information is in the description box. I am still here and I am still pregnant. So she has not made her way yet. But hopefully she will in the next few days. Who knows. But anyway you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging with me. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye. The